I'm just telling you. The good news is I got my walk in this morning, and that always helps me clear my head. So also, John's brother is here, Jim, and he's from Texas, from the Dallas area. We He came here for a nice week, and they're going to golf, golf, golf uh, while John's working in between. So that's super fun. And then today, when this is over, I am... It's a long story, but Lennox, who is six, wants her ears pierced so badly, and every time her mommy has taken her, she freaks out and can't do it, and so three times to be exact. So the other day, I told her, I dare, loud enough so Lennox could hear, that Robin and I were going to get our ears pierced, and her kit, her head almost was like the exorcist, ah! and then she came over. I said, well, do you want to get your ears pierced. And she said, well, mommy says I can't till I'm 10. Well, that's because she kept, you know, j yanking her chain. And so, and so, um, Adair said, I said, I wasn't going to take you. So if this is your workaround, Lennox, you have figured it out. <laughs> so Robin and I are taking Lennox. Robin needs one hole. I need two holes. They've grown in. And I don't even know if I want them. This is called taking it for the team. And then we'll just see if Lennox is going to come through. You can do it, girl. You can do it. So um, yesterday, on Thursdays, I go to my mini group when I'm available. And fortunately, I was yesterday because something kind of extraordinary happened. It's at Diana's McClen's house. Uh, Freddie goes there. I'm trying to think whom else you might know. Uh, Tara goes there. She wasn't there yesterday. Uh, Alethea goes there. She wasn't there yesterday. It's a great group of supportive women. Well, anyways, um, uh, Patty brought over Sarah Trail. And I have heard of Sarah Trail before. And she has, she's published her first book like when she was 14, not she, C&T published her first book when she was like 14, and now she is, um, she has a new book coming out, it just, she just got her copies yesterday, and she is starting a um, sewing thing, the thing that I can only kind of equate it to is like the AIDS project, but it, uh, if somebody has lost somebody to violence, and it doesn't, it can, it can be, it's not like this group or that group or that group. It's it's together, okay? It's it's everything. And I don't want to go down that hole, but um, they will make a banner on that person's behalf and in memorum of that banner. And oftentimes the family hands over clothing and stuff like that, and that's what they make it out of. I will tell you, as far as books go, I have... It is one of the most beautiful books I've ever seen C&T produce. It is physically unbelievably beautiful. So I've heard a lot about her. She is a flippin' powerhouse, and I've already ordered mine on Amazon. So that was, I mean, we all just kind of walked away with our, you know, because it, it, she's just an amazing, amazing young woman. So I got some great pictures from you guys, and I'm really happy about that. And after we go through the pictures, I'm going to talk about why you need to learn to foundation paper piece. <laughs> why? And how I got started. So I got this picture from Paula, who did uh, Sizzle, our B-O-M, and she's hung it up, but now she's decked it out for fall, <laughs> Paula. I love this. This is so cute. It's making me look at my quilts quite differently, I guess you could say. So thank you. Thank you. And again, she sent the image to me at A-L-E-X-A-N-D-R-S-N -S at Gmail. Okay, what is Rock? I put these all up yesterday, so I can't quite remember everything. Oh, Roxanne finally finished her CAFE project. Roxanne, take a bow. I think you should be very, very, very happy with it. You know, I think I've shared this with you before, but we called it CAFE's Mystery Quilt because I didn't know what it was going to be. And I was just grabbing at straws of something we could sew together. And halfway through, I went, oh my gosh, I think... I'm into something I can't complete. And you guys had bought all these kits. And I was super scared. You know, it happens to us professionals, okay? But I figured mine out. Remember, you're in control. The quilt isn't. And um, just beautiful results like this. Just beautiful. And you didn't even throw any polka dots in, Roxanne. So yay for that. 
Then Becky sent me um, the spools that she's done in black background. It's gorgeous, may I say. And if we look at those spool blocks, it's kind of on the principle of foundation paper piecing because we did work on a foundation and we flip and sewed, flip and sewed. Can you imagine trying to do that with templates? You would just want to cry, okay? So thank you. And also Becky is a star member and has had a heck of a time in the forum, which, uh, you know, uh, uh, if you ever have an image and you can't, I tr beg you to try and get it on the form. Most people can't. Some of us have been blocked sometimes. And so um, send it to me because I want to share. I, it makes me, it, it's like, okay, we're all getting something done here together. Okay, that's Becky's. By the way, uh, I think we like it in black, right? What do you guys say? I think so. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, then Margaret. Okay, paper piecing. Why? Let's take a look at some quilts that have been done with foundation paper piecing. And this is different than paper piecing, which is like when you're sewing all the hexagons together and stuff, all right? This is a separate beast. I um, was absolutely 100% not interested in writing this book because, you see, I didn't foundation paper piece. And I had another book that c and had a contract in front of them with that I was really excited about. It was, uh, I believe it was Shadow Red Work, and it was Red Work with messages behind it. And Todd, and I've shared this before, but I'm going to share it again. Todd would not sign the contract for the Shadow Red Work if I didn't do this. And I'm like, hear me. Do you not know this is against my religion? How clear do I have to be? And he was Clearly, I'm not signing the other contract till you do this. <laughs> if I can learn it, you can learn it. And really, it's quite simple. It really, truly is quite simple. And I'm going to teach you the basics and we're going to go through it so it's not so horrifying and mystifying. The other thing I want to say is that there are many ways to foundation paper piece. At group yesterday, Karen told her niece or whatever, don't do it this other way. I don't care how you do it, <laughs> and you know who you are. Um, I'm going to do it how, I'm going to teach you how I learned, but understand there's lots of different ways out there, and if you're um, a star member of the Quilt Show, all you have to do is go there and go to uh, search and put foundation paper piecing, and you're going to find a ton of quilts to look at, you're going to find a ton of shows to watch, etc. Okay, so... Let's look at some quilts that have been foundation paper piecing, pieced or blocks, all right? Uh, you guys started sending them pictures into me, and thank you very much. Margaret sent this in, and this is foundation paper piece. And though it is wonky and all that, you would still want to be able to do foundation paper piecing because those spikes would be darn near, and I, I, I would say, almost impossible to get without it. And yes, there are different various techniques of foundation paper piecing. Okay, so I started searching the web and I found this book by um, Cinzia. I'm going to say it wrong. Cinzia. And there is yet another New York beauty. And I will tell you right now, uh, Karen Stone, if you want to go Google her, um, I think kind of set the precedent of what was possible with foundation paper pieced, only to be matched by Judy Niemeyer's patterns. So this is by, uh, it's a Judy Niemeyer pattern, um, and it's by Carol, I hope I say it right, Carol, Carol Stenek, I think, and it is posted in our gallery on the site. Thank you very, very much. This is spectacular. Um, no way without foundation paper piecing. Don't worry, we're not going to get into something like this, but I just want to show you that you have a tool belt, and in that tool belt, you can put a ton of tools, or you can say, I'm a nine patch till the day I die. It's up to you. And the older I get, the no more I know that my toolbox is getting fatter and fatter, and I am having a richer and richer experience because of it. So this is Jenny Phlox. Okay, get this one. Um, this was, okay, this is so flippin' cool. This was her first attempt at foundation paper piecing. 
first attempt, people. And look at that. She did it. It's not hard to learn. Well, yes, it is. What's hard to learn is twisting your brain around. It's Everything is opposite and counterintuitive. And for somebody like me, who's a dyslexic, you throw that on top of it. But once you learn it, it's like, whoa, the stuff, the, oh, the places you'll go, the people you'll meet. <laughs> okay, this is um, a quilt I found, and it's by uh, Creative Quilt Enthusiasts. It didn't have one name. So it's my guess that this was a group quilt. And if you've ever participated in a group quilt, it can be this size short of nightmaric because um, everybody's quarter inch is a little bit different, if you know what I mean. So you'll get all these blocks that are different and then you gotta put them together. But this, if you're doing foundation paper piecing, guess what, bam, they're right on and they're gonna fit into that format beautifully. So as I was uh, surfing yesterday, I was really pleased when I found that because I thought that's another example why you want to be able to do this. Okay, this is a Stitch in Heaven's pattern, and it's called Wild Waves. You, you'd have to do this foundation paper piece. Uh, this is essentially a pineapple that's off-center a little bit, and I will talk about pineapple in a few moments, because that was what kind of also convinced me that foundation paper piecing might have a place. But look, you guys, there is no way... I'm going to do something like this. That is not in my wheelhouse. But guess what? This is in my wheelhouse. And the border of this was foundation paper pieced. I suppose I could have made a uh, template for those diamonds and the blue diamonds and then a template for the outside triangles of it and, and sew it the old fashioned traditional way but it was so much easier to do it this way. By the way, this quilt was made for a fabric line of mine back in the day, and it is a free pattern on quilterselect.com. It's our gift to you. Um, you can go to quilterselect.com, find the tab resources, and then under that are patterns. So this is there. I. I love this quilt. I love everything about this. And so, see, you can go as complex as uh, Carol's uh, quilt of Judy's, or you can just do it really simple. But let's just take it one more step for complex. <laughs> That's Kamiko Friedals. I think I showed this the other day. Oh, note the finger pointing at the bottom. It's 18 and a half inches finished, all right? It would have been impossible, impossible to do it without that. Again, I am not teaching you that. <laughs> I'm just teaching the basics. So what I want to do is just go through, so we're going to start on Monday and we're going to start with a square within a square, which is, hangs in our cabin. And um, the reason I did not have to have foundation paper piece this, but I chose to because the fabrics were flannel. And flannel can be really wonky when you work with it. So because I foundation paper pieced it, um, it was it went together like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Now the other thing I wanna share that's completely off topic, but the boat on the upper left, you know my dad built model, model boats. Let me get out of there. Why is my dad built model boats and a lot of them are right up behind me. There were shipwrecks in the Great Lakes up around Door County. And when we were up at the International Peace Gardens with um, Ricky at a super seminar, there was it was it is a kite. There was this kite. And my dad was really not in complete full set dementia, but he was 70% down. And I bought him he's an engineer, was an engineer. I bought him this kit so that he could build a boat. And it was the last boat he ever built. It's a pretty cool story, huh? Yeah. So let's take a look here at the first time I thought, you know, okay. So I was like, 
Forget foundation paper piecing. I'm going to make this pineapple block and I don't care. It, it's going to work. And so I did flip, you know, I did all my sewing, trimming. It's kind of a variation. Well, you just flip and sew, flip and sew, flip and sew. And I probably made 12 of these, all right? And when I went to put it together, this had all stretched because these are cut biases. See, this is straight a grain. This is straight a grain. This is straight a grain, okay? But this is bias. And when I went to put them together, I couldn't. And so uh, actually yesterday at mini group, uh, Kathy, uh, Kathy DeBlocchio was there. She comes to my retreat. Um, she used to hangs out at Freddie's house sometimes. And she had one of these that she was working on. And I said, okay, I'm going to defer to Freddie on this. Does this have to be foundation paper paste? And they both said no. But you have to be really, really, really careful when you go with your iron. So they kind of blew my story today. But understand there are blocks in there that can swing either way. Um, so I made this for the book. This is one of the blocks she'll be making. And the pineapple. And I did it with foundation. Oh, can I? There we go. I did it with foundation paper piecing. And now... Like, this is bias, this is bias, but I'm not going to have to worry about it because I've got the paper on the back. I'm trying to get the camera to zoom there, clear up. So see, this is all going to hold it together. All right. So then let's talk about basically there's two kinds of foundation paper piecing. And this, this is kind of the crux of it. Even if it is a... Um, something cray cray like a bird or something when you look at the pattern you have to determine whether basically it's working from the center out or from the middle or from one portion within the area out or if you're working from one side to another it boils down just to that people just to that it boils down to from somewhere in the middle out to one side to another and what we're going to do in the class is we're going to do simple classic blocks starting with this one and then working our way to this one which is actually a very easy block to do so why foundation paper piece other than you want to do fabulous points like this okay well sometimes um, Fabric is weird and wonky, like that uh, flannel I was working with. Honestly, some of the pieces in Jennifer's collection that we're going to be working with, excuse me while I reach across, is a loose grain, a loosely woven fabric. All right? I'm thrilled to be foundation paper piecing with this because it will, it will help with all the attitude adjustments that it needs. Um, silk, you might want to consider it with silk. If you're seeing that a fabric has a wonky personality, um, that's one reason to consider it. Okay, so are all blocks suitable for foundation paper piecing? The answer is no. Okay, so a nine patch or a four, let's do a four patch because that's faster to draw. This would not be suitable for foundation paper piecing. Sure, you could flop this to this, this to this, sew it across, and line this up. And I'm going to show you how to do that when we do the kaleidoscope. But just get at your sewing machine and sew, okay? Now this one, a snowball, what did I come down for? Okay. You could foundation paper piece this because it is a cousin, if you want to get down to it, to this. But why would I want to bother? I can just do a flip and sew here. Um, I can do get the triangle so it's a little bit bigger, etc. I wouldn't foundation paper piece this. You could. So why do I say, nah, I'd rather do it the traditional way? I'd rather do it the traditional way because then you don't have to take out the paper. All right. And actually, this is um, print and piece fuse light. If you want to get down to it, that's what I'm I mean, print and piece, which is our product at um, Quilter Select that when it's time to take it out and I wasn't counting on doing this, I can just wet this and the whole thing pulls away. What if 
it will work with my iced tea. No, I'm not going to do that. Let me try this for grins. You know, I, I, I still would like to take it out. Look at that. It just wee. Um, so, so, you know, you can leave this product in. You know about 80% of it goes away. You can leave it in. But I think in a case of like this big old quilt, I would take it out as I go. However, that said, never, ever, ever take it all off until all of the sides are secured. So this was before print and piece. And what's going on here, yeah, that's weird. What's going on, because it's not before, I don't know why, here we go. Right here, actually this is a good one to see it with, you've got cave stripes that are going like this. If I take this paper out now, that is gonna stretch forever and it's gonna defeat the, re the reasons you're using foundation paper piecing, okay? So leave it in. I always tell people, like in the example of the quilt behind me, I didn't take out anything until that inner border was sewn on. I might not have even taken it out um, until the outer border was sewn on. So those are some of the considerations. Here's another one. Here, oh, here's another block we'll be doing. This is um, crazy quilting, which is basically done on a foundation. And it's a flip and sew, flip and sew. And everything's going crazy and wacky. You've got biases everywhere. And so I just do some flippy on this. And then I, you know, made the block. And it's as cute as a button. So we'll be doing that block too. By the way, if you get stuck on a block and say, I can't stand it. I have to do a whole thing of it. It's your quilt. Do it. Okay. So here is a beloved tree of mine that a Christmas tree that I love. And I've made this quilt three times. And this is a crazy shape no matter how you slice it. Whether you're doing templates, whether you're doing rotary cutting, it's a crazy block. All right. It, things get wonky and weird. So how, somebody wanted to know Oh gosh, they had it in six inch and then they want to paper piece it in four inch or something like that. You can draw your own paper piecing patterns. Let's say you wanted, okay, I would be using a ruler and I'd be getting it right in real time. All right, you understand that? One, two, one, two, three. I'll do three by three, three by three. Again, use a ruler. You find the center. This is the opposite of what we did on Friday, on Wednesday, guys. Draw this here. I can just use my little cheat sheet here. And I have just drafted a foundation paper piecing pattern. It is the pattern in real, in finished size, okay? In finished size. And what I would do is then I would add my quarter inch seam allowance by adding dots. And that's what you're going to see is in the book using my ruler, not like a crazy person here. And then I would add the dots for this guy, this guy here. Come around the edge. I might even do it on two different ones. I don't know. But the point is you're going to sew on these lines and then you're going to trim off your quarter inch. This block is the case of from the center out. So this would be one. This would be two, this would be three. That's how easy it is, all right? So if, if I, I tend to like to work with classic blocks. That's my jam, all right? Um, and I find, though, if I look at things like Judy Niemeyer's and all that, it's, it's all, it, it, they'll take sections, and then you look at that section, and you're saying, what's going on in that section? Are you going from one side to another, or are you going from the center out, or from somewhere in the middle out, all right? It, it's just that. It's that simple. Um, let's see. Why? Why? For weirdo fabrics, blocks with weirdo, I love my vocabulary, uh, bias edges, skinny points. I mean, there are reasons, all right? So what you're going to want are, is this. You're going to want your paper that you're going to work on. And we spoke about that already. If you're brand new, 
I would be getting um, vellum for the start so you can see through it because you are twisting your brain around. Um, Carol Doak has a paper that's fine, but at Quilter Select, we've got print and piece, which when you understand the system, I like to use because I'm not stressing the seams when I'm taking out the paper, all right? And if you bought kits from us, we put in five complimentary sheets of that for you to play with, but I wouldn't start with that. And the other thing I want to say too with a print and piece, when you run it through your printer, uh, do it single sheet at a time. I know there are settings on your computer or printer that you can do, but what, what happens is that because it's really not paper, it's a fiber, one will stick to the other and kind of half drag in the other, okay? So I'm going to probably be using vellum so you can see both sides because that's really important. All right. Um, there, what I like to do too in my patterns is give you a rough cut because people say, oh, you waste so much fabric. Not if you do rough cuts. So you'll understand that when we get going on Monday. All right. So I got an email from someone this morning and said they're late to the party. And I know you're not late to the party. You're right on time. You can get the PDF at thequiltshow.com for um, like 10 bucks or 9.95. I don't know what it is, but it's really cheap. Uh, once you download it, you have it. What I would do, because I'm a pattern, I'm a book kind of gal, is I would get um, a binder and put the pages in it. I, I more, I feel much more comfortable with this in front of me than um, something on the computer. So I would just print it out. And I mean, honestly, there's only 54 pages. And if you're just doing the project, it is 47 pages, okay? So, because we're not putting the Chinese lantern in. Whoops, this is an add-on for the second edition. If you have the first edition, you're all good to go. No worries, it's all the same. So let me see if there are some um, questions here. Questions. Let's see. Okay, let's see. I think we're good to go, and I'm going to go get my ears pierced. <laughs> this is totally taking it for the team. Totally. I don't want them pierced anymore. <laughs> but that's what a good bubby does. And I feel like I had something else to say, but <laughs> you know how that goes. So, oh, my new glasses. Yeah, here's the thing. I can see. I can see. Now, they're crooked like my other ones were, like this. But when I picked them up, there was no electric electricity in the office. It had gone out. I got some sunglasses, so I'll get it done. I don't know if I was griping to you guys going, I can't see. I can't see. And the doctor said, um, boy, these really are bad. The doctor said, you are at the age of being in between. <laughs> So, um, I mean, it was the point with my other glasses, which I love those glasses. When I was driving, I'd take them off because I was going to get a car wreck because it was all blurry. So I love my new glasses. Yay. Um, yes, vellum will go um, through your printer just fine. Any prep work before Monday, I, you know, if you want to wash your fabric. Go ahead. Oh, wait, I did have one other thing to show you um, that is just an ancillary thing. So when you are foundation paper piecing, you are doing a lot of pressing, okay? So this is a wood TV tray that I got from Target or Walmart, and I had my son-in-law cut down the legs as low as they could go so that when I'm in my swivel chair, I can just swivel press, swivel press, swivel press. And the iron that I used was my Hobico, but I'm probably going to be using this one now, the Aliso. I know a lot of you have it. Some people like to just do a use a brayer. I think that's called a wallpaper brayer, but I really like pressing. So if you have a TV tray that you can put next to you, the only reason I cut it down was it just seemed like when it was at table high, it, it was it was too high. John's in here. Right and wrong side to print and piece. Right and wrong side to print and piece does not exist. It's all the same. It's all the same. Okay. 
In the book, you're showing how to make your own pattern, or does it give you patterns? Joan, it's going to give you patterns, okay? And what we tell you to do in the book, because I'm reading it, <laughs> is when you print out one pattern, um, make sure you hold it up to the pattern in the book and it matches up. All right. Another thing people will do, and we didn't do it when we did this book. This book was written, and I've learned a lot since then, 2010. Okay. Um, another thing you could do, it, oh, look at this one doesn't even have the, the, this just has the sewing lines. I shouldn't have said that other stuff with the, with the um, Christmas tree. You could also take here and draw an inch block right down here and run it through your printer, an exact inch block and make sure that this comes out measuring an inch. In fact, that's what I would do, people. That's what I would do. And I'm sorry I showed you the stupid dotted lines around that one. Um, we are, we will be getting, we will be getting more books. Um, will we be getting more books? Um, we, have we have them on order. Um, that's why I'm suggesting just go get the PDF and print it out and put it in a book. Um, vellum tracing. Not vellum Bristol. Vellum. Okay, this is interesting. I did not know this. Oh, I love you guys so much. Um, get vellum tracing. Well, we sell it on our site. Not vellum Bristol. And I don't know the difference, but um, you guys have covered my back 10,000 times. So thank you for that. Marianne, washing your um, fabrics. That is up to you. I don't. I live dangerously. I do when I'm making a quilt as a gift or like a baby quilt, but like the quilt behind me, that was for publication. So I wanted it to be as crisp and perfect as ever. And I'm always willing to run the risk of things running, okay? But in looking at what Jennifer has, I'm just not that, what, what the bundles are, I'm just not that worried about it, okay? Okay, um, have you tried paperless paper piecing? Um, Michelle, no. Uh, and I will tell you, Barbara Black is guiding us through Wendy Williams block of the month this year. And it is not how I'm going to be teaching you. It's a different way. And it goes back to what Karen was telling her niece or her friend or whatever. There's lots of ways to do it. But if this is new to you, I just want to take you through A, B, C so that when it's over, it's locked in your brain. Okay. Um, did, uh, the requirements are on the site, Joanne. Um, and Tiffany, I got to go too. I have a little girl that's waiting for me to get her from school and get her ears pierced. So thanks for joining me. We'll see you Monday. And let's light a candle, say a prayer. Okay? Bye-bye. Have a great weekend. I know I'm going to.